Now whenever an argument is valid, we can represent it using any of these three forms. Whenever you say that this argument is valid, right? Now one other way of writing the same thing is by using this representation, okay? Or by using this representation. So all these three are same and we mostly use this kind of representation or to say that a uh, argument is valid. Now if you want to, now let's see some rules of inference. Now why are we using these rules of inference is given some premises, if we have to derive a conclusion, we are going to use certain rules, they are called as rules of inference. We shall start with the basic ones. First one is simplification rules. Now P and Q, if this is the premise, then what could be the conclusion is simply P. Now why did I get it is? If P and Q is true, then definitely both of them have to be true. So what you understand, P has to be true and Q has to be true. Therefore, from this you can derive that P. So whatever you know, proposition you derive, that has to be true. Now simply what you can derive is, you can say that P is true. right? So how to represent it? You can use this representation, which means P and Q, tautological implication P is true or P and Q totally you know implies p is a tautology so either this representation or this representation we have used it now it is not just that you can derive p you can also derive this one p and q if it is true as you know both p and q have to be true therefore you can also say that q is also true right okay now let's test whether this is tautology or not how can we test it is now we have this let us say this is P and Q. I'm I'm drawing a truth table Q, and then P and Q implies P. P and Q P P and Q implies P. Now two values that P can take is either it can take true or it can take false, right? Now if P is true, then the truth value of P and Q will depend on truth value of Q. Therefore, it can either become true or it can either become false. Whatever it is, whenever it implies true the truth value is going to be true why either true implies true is true or false implies true is true that is why it is always going to be true now whenever p is false then what happens is p and q will definitely be false and we know that false implies false is true therefore this is always a tautology right so that is a tautology and in this case if you consider this one as the premise and this one as the conclusion then you can say that it is a valid argument right and this is the rule from simplification so this is one of the rules of inference which is called simplification it need not just be p you can also put q there okay now let's see the rules of inferences so here if you see this p if this is the premise we can conclude p or q so how is it uh, you know a valid uh, argument is if you assume that p is true you add anything to it with a r it is definitely going to be true, isn't it? This is truth value, right? So this is true, then definitely P or Q, whatever this is, it is always going to be true. Similarly, if Q is true, P or Q is going to be true. So that is just simply addition rule, right? Now, one other way of writing this is, as you know, P tautologically implies P or Q is true. This is one other way of writing it, as well as you can say that P implies P or Q is tautology. So these two ways also you can write it, but then since it is time taken, I am not writing it. In case if you see this in the exam, you should you should also pick these rules. Okay, this is other way of writing the same thing. Now the next one is negation P and P implies Q is given. So how to understand this one is you can write P implies Q as negation P or Q right now since this is true this part is true irrespective of what you have here it will always be true isn't it that is why if this one is already known to be true you can add anything to it with a r and you can say that the resulting is true that is why it is a valid argument right and again if you see this q p implies q so why is this valid is you can look at this conclusion p implies q can be written as negation p or q right now if q is true this is true then irrespective of the truth value of the other side this is always going to be true right which means if you already know that this is true you can add something to it with a r 
and you can say that the entire thing is true therefore this argument is valid and now coming to the next one this is true which means this is true then we are deriving it so how is it possible is as you know p implies q is negation p or q if i negate it then it is going to be p and negation q which means this entire thing i could write this way now this entire thing is known to be true when is this no going to be true when this one is true and this one is true isn't it therefore saying that p is true if this entire thing is true is right valid why unless p is true this entire thing cannot be true right therefore saying that p is true given that this is true is valid argument and next one is same thing so this one is this this one can be written as p and negation q as you have seen here the same way now given that this one is true when will this one be true this one will be true when p is true as well as negation q entirely is true right therefore saying that negation q is true is completely valid okay now let's see this conjunction if p and q are true then definitely p and q will be true therefore it is a valid argument now disjunctive syllogism so disjunctive syllogism is if p is true or q is true and negation p is true see if negation p is true what can you say about p p is false in this place if you put p false and still if this entire thing is going to be true how will it be possible only when q is true therefore from these two you can derive that q is true right and so from these premises you are able to derive this preposition and so this is valid argument and now conjunctive syllogism now if you observe this negation p and q it can be written as negation p or negation q and already p is given so what does it mean p is true if p is true what can you say about this this entire negation p is false but still if this entire thing is true it will be possible only when negation q is true that is why writing negation q is valid right this is a valid argument modus ponens or rule of detachment now if you observe this one p implies q can be written as negation p or q now it is already given that p is true if p is true then negation p is false isn't it but still if this entire thing is going to be true definitely q has to be true that is why conclusion q which is true okay now let's see this modus tollens or the rule of all the rule of contrapositive now if you have this p implies q and uh, you know negation q if both of them are true then we can say that this is the conclusion now how we got it is see this p implies q can be written as negation p or q so it is already known to be true now if i use conjunction with negation q which is already known to be true then this entire thing is supposed to be true are you getting this given that this is true and this is true if i apply a conjunction between these two which means and then i am supposed to get everything to be true right now you can just write the rules like this negation p or i can just combine these two negation q and negation q right now as you know q and negation q is always going to be false right now this entire thing has to be true see this entire thing has to be true therefore this entire thing has to be true now if this entire thing has to be true and if this part is already false only choice we have is this part has to be true so we can definitely say that this is going to be true and so that is what i am writing the right? negation p is true and so this argument is valid now let's see the same thing for the for this transitivity p implies q is true q implies r is true then we are saying that p implies r is true now one way of writing this p implies q is negation p or q now since this is true and this is also true one way of writing this q implies r is negation q or r now since these two are true definitely if i apply a conjunction that is supposed to be true so this entire thing is supposed to be true now right now what we could do is here i can apply conjunction first between these two then what will remain this entire thing is going to be false 
now if this entire thing is going to be false it is simply negation p or negation q is going to remain right so if this entire thing has to be true then negation p or q or r is supposed to be true then what does it mean p implies r is supposed to be true right therefore from these two we got this so it is a valid argument right now looking at this one dilemma now p or q we can write it this way it is no given that this is already true and p implies r we could write it this way negation p or r and q implies r we could write it this way negation q or r right now since these three are true if i apply a conjunction between these three they are also supposed to be true right now if i apply conjunction i can rearrange the terms in such a way that i can apply you know and between these two right and i can apply and between these two if i do that then what will remain so these two and means it is going to be false if these two are and it means it is going to be false then what will remain is i think only term you are remaining is r right check this these two are going to be false these two are going to be false now i am going to get false or r right now if this one has to be true definitely r has to be true that is why we got this okay now let's see this constructive dilemma given that p or q is true and p implies r can be written as negation p or r and q implies s can be written as negation q or s now i can apply and between these three and that is entirely supposed to be true right now i can rearrange the terms in such a way that i can join these two and i can join these two now what are the terms remaining r yes therefore if this entire thing has to be true then r or s has to be true therefore from this you are going to get this now for this one you can do the same thing p implies r can be written as negation p or r this is true and q implies s can be written as negation q or s this is supposed to be true and then negation r or negation s now if i apply and this is supposed to be true now what i could do is these two i can join and then these two i can join now you just see what is remaining negation p or negation q are remaining right therefore this is supposed to be true if this entire thing has to be true then the remaining terms negation q negation p or negation q is supposed to be true right okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into universities better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days 
and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90 percent success rate 99 percent success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia canada so we guide we guide students to all the countries we work with all the destinations and if you are interested in going abroad you have to just drop us a message on this whatsapp number 9494 555 454 okay thank you